Hello, my dear viewer. Pastor Bagambe is back. Mm -hmm. He's bringing you hope from the Holy Scripture. And today's topic is a verb, an imperative, open. Welcome, wow. Pastor Bagambe. Thank you, Prince. Open. Let me open the Bible. Please. <laughs> yes. Uh, the book of Luke, we are reading from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 38. The word of God says, As Jesus and his disciples were on the way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Mm. Yes, let us pray. God, our heavenly Father, we are now getting into something very important, the subject of opening. We pray that, Lord, you will help us to open, that, Lord, you will help us to stay in, that, Lord, you will even help us to understand and listen to your voice. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity that you give to each one of us every day to share your word. And we pray that amidst trials and temptations, tribulations and pandemics, you hold our hands. You help us to know that our God lives forever. Help us also to understand that when you are around, everything is around. Thank you, Jesus, for being there for us. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. First of all, Pastor, let's unpack. We know that this verb open carries, you know, meaning, yeah, really. Sure, heavy, sure, heavy sure. meaning. Sure. Uh, in, 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 in biblical terms, mm -hmm. or in, in, well, open, everybody would understand Martha is physically taught to open, mm -hmm. and she opened mm -hmm. indeed. Mm -hmm. But Revelation, which you read, I know, 3 verse 20 talks mm -hmm. about opening, mm -hmm. now opening the heart, opening the home. Mm -hmm. But right now, let's dwell on open. Okay. What, what, what do you mean by open? Yeah, Prince, thank you for that very important question of opening. I practically pick the verb from Luke 10, 38. Mm. When Christ was moving with his disciples, he came to this village. And when Martha saw Jesus, the Bible says, she opened her home mm. to him. Mm -hmm. To me, as a spiritual person, to me, as a, a Bible believer, mm. when I see someone opening for Jesus, I see quite a lot. Mm. When Martha opened for Jesus, Jesus entered the home. And uh, you are going to see very many things changing when Christ entered. Mm. And so in this context, the word open is used for purposes of opening our homes for Jesus. Allow. Yes. Just allow, open. You know, mm -hmm. Christ may not get into something that is not open, especially if your heart is not open, mm. and especially if your home is not open. But whether we are in peace or we are in trouble, we must get our doors open for Christ to come in. And you're suggesting that we have the power to open? Of course, the power to open is within our hands. Okay. Yes. The other day you talked about Elisha's servant. Yes. Whose eyes could not see vision. I mean, uh -huh. whose vision? But the sight had no problem. Yes. But Elisha prayed, open his eyes. Now, could it be that mother's eyes, she opens her eyes, let's say, before she opens the home. What mm. do you think? <laughs> now, when you look at the two, the one in Second Kings, uh, Second Kings chapter 6, where Elijah is praying to God to get his servant's eyes open, mm. well, primarily to see the protection of God. Okay. 
this one, in, in other words, in the other one, God is the one opening the eyes. In this one, it is mother opening mm -hmm. for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and right here, it is even more serious because Martha has seen Jesus. That sight is working well. The physical sight. She mm -hmm. has seen Jesus. And even the spiritual sight is functioning well. After seeing Jesus, she opens for Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, I think both are playing a, an important role here. Mm. Martha saw and opened. The other servant did not see. <laughs> That's why God mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. helped and opened. The Maybe eyes. I interjected when you wanted to tell something to the viewer about uh, opening in you know, practical terms, mm -hmm. you know, from abstract to concrete mm -hmm. opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when, when you, you mentioned, I remember you mentioned Revelation 3, verse 20, verse 20 where the, Jesus is on the door knocking and he's saying, whoever hears my voice mm. and open, I'll be, I will enter and I will be with those people. Now, Jesus always loves to stay with us and stay in our hearts mm. and in our lives and in our homes. In a place and time like this one, that is what we need. And so Jesus is knocking. He wants everybody's heart open. He wants to deal with everybody. He wants to assist with everybody. He wants to dine with everybody. He wants to communicate with everybody. But now, when we are, we are when we, we 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 keep our hearts closed, and Jesus is not anywhere, there, there will always be darkness in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yes, there will mm -hmm. always be darkness in our lives. Now, here, Martha opened the home. And you're going to see quite a number of things taking place. Mm. Now, when we open for Jesus, Jesus will always, and he has said it himself, oh, I'm knocking, I'm knocking. You know, that's the reason I want to encourage everybody viewing, not only in this pandemic, but always keep our, the, the doors of our hearts open for Jesus, Jesus Christ. It mm. is very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When Martha opened, you said mm -hmm. things happened. Mm. Is opening the door for Jesus enough in our homes? Let's say we have him. <laughs> that is quite provoking. <laughs> uh, opening for him to come in mm -hmm. like Martha did. Physically, Martha opened and Jesus entered. Mm -hmm. But opening alone is not sufficient. When you open, what do you do with Jesus? It's just like in the church. You are baptized. We are baptized. Yeah. You have surely opened. Everybody sees you as an Adventist. Everybody can see you even going to church. Mm. Everybody can see you probably even take you as someone. For, but inside your heart, what are you doing with Jesus? Mm. Because when Martha opened, unfortunately, when she opened, there was a sister mm -hmm. called Mary mm -hmm. who took over. Yeah. Here, yeah. Mary took over. Yeah, the English people, we say that Mary stole the show. Her, her, her thunder. Yes. yes. <laughs> she, stole, yes. she stole Martha's thunder. Yes. <laughs> After you have opened, where do you go? Where, what do you do with Jesus? Because the Bible says when Jesus entered after Martha had opened, there was a sister called Mary who sat at the feet of Jesus. Friends, there is nothing as important as sitting at the feet of Jesus mm -hmm. because it is a... I mean, the feet of Jesus is the best place for a sinner. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, even in this pandemic, this corona thing, this COVID-19, the best place for us to be is at the feet of Jesus. Mm. Yes. Mm. We can wash our hands. We can physically distance ourselves. We can even wear masks. We can lock ourselves in the houses. We can, but at the end of it all, the most critical point, the most critical place for us to be is at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Yes. I, to me, it's a novelty. I didn't know that it's even Martha who opened. But the Bible says it's, <laughs> yes. it's Martha yes. who opened. Yes. And later on, mm -hmm. we see Mary, you know, coming into the sea. It, and it, yes. But, but you see, what was Mary doing at the feet of Jesus? Mm. The Bible says Mary was at the feet of Jesus listening. Yes. In other words, Jesus was speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, Prince, you'll believe me that every time Jesus is speaking through his servants, Jesus is speaking through his scripture like we are reading them today, Jesus is speaking, but I appreciate Mary when he sat at the feet of Jesus Christ. The Bible says she was quiet, listening. You know, Prince, the quieter you are, the more you hear. Yes, 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 quite yes. Yeah. I know you, we, you and I can't have time to unpack these two important these verbs are, in life. Yeah, they are quite loaded. Speaking and listening. Mm -hmm. Could it be that after opening for Jesus, we now speak or we, <laughs> we become <laughs> orators? Yes, you know sometimes. As if we, we, we were to teach him. And You are right. Many people believe when Martha opened the house for Jesus, Martha went to prepare. Yes, a, a meal. A meal. That's what mm -hmm. many people believe. Mm -hmm. But when you check scripture, Martha was not even preparing anything. Mm -hmm. Much of the time, Martha was speaking. She quarreled until she came and attacked even Jesus Christ. Master, don't you care that I do this work alone and my sister is here? Mm. Friend. In other words, mother was in a different place. Mm. And Mary was in the, at the right place. Mm -hmm. You know, Prince, when Christ is speaking, please learn to suspend what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's nothing important there's nothing more important than what Jesus Christ is saying. That is great. Uh, yes, you know, Ma Ma Martha is right there. In the, which food was she preparing? Mm -hmm. Which food was more important than Jesus? Yes. Yes. Wh which other speech would you love to listen to mm -hmm. apart from what Jesus is saying? Mm -hmm. and, and even in, in, in our daily lives, in our trials and uh, tribulations, we must give Jesus' speech priority. Let us see what Jesus Christ is speaking. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. Because at the feet of Jesus, that's where you find life. Mm -hmm. At the feet of Jesus, that's where you find hope. Mm -hmm. at, at the feet of Jesus, that's where you find healing. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mary was in the right place. Mm -hmm. We need to emulate that example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it is in order, Pastor. So could it be that we mute Jesus mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> even after we've opened? We mute him when we, yeah. we talk and speak and, yeah. you know, and, and, and sometimes we interrupt him. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine interrupting him. Anyway, but let's go back to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus knocking. Mm. And, and, and the Bible doesn't say he's, he's rapping. He's knocking. He's knocking, mm -hmm. <laughs> which implies politeness. Yeah. The, the question is, um, why can't he just enter, pry, push the door and come in? <laughs> He's the creator. He's all powerful. And if it is, some people we argue, if it is for my salvation, yes. let him break the door. Let him break the door. <laughs> but, but you know... <laughs> <clears throat> Prince, you are raising a very important uh, uh, question, and I would love our viewers also to appreciate this. Down history and through scripture, 
we read God giving human beings freedom to choose. Amen. Yes. This, this, this motif, this uh, uh, theme of freedom of choice runs through scripture. That's why you find men like Joshua are asking, after the Israelites are confusing, one day they are worshiping this, another day they seem to be worshiping God, and there's total confusion until the man of God stood and said, Hello, mm. please, from today, choose mm. <laughs> whom you will, mm -hmm. you will serve. Mm -hmm. But I and my family will serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. this, this freedom of choice has been running through, and I think it is still there. But I, I, I want to appreciate and it is deep, yes. I, I believe. Quite deep. That's what the Bible says, we were created in the image yes. of God. Yes. That element. Very I don't important. see you, pastor, in your farm mm -hmm. giving the right to choose mm -hmm. to your goats. <laughs> <laughs> now, right here, yeah. I, I want to appreciate the way God has been handling this issue mm -hmm. of choice. God gives you the freedom to choose. But he guides you on how to do it. Amen. Yes. Even in the Garden of Eden, he, he showed man free to eat all the trees. And then he told him, this one, don't choose. Because mm. the day you choose it, death. Mm. He, he has been constantly telling us to choose. You know, Prince, let me mention this one. I'm not being a politician here. Mm -hmm. But in the, in, the, in the government of God, there is nothing called human rights. Mm -hmm. No. When God calls you and you want to work with him, you must do God's will. <laughs> so, yes. Human rights, yes. It, was, it is a masterpiece uh, of human beings. Yes. They are the creators of human uh -huh. rights. They, That's why it they, goes wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. The moment you come to church with human rights, you have actually come to destroy the church. Because in the church, we do God's will. The church of God was just put there to do God's will. Hello, dear viewer, yes. I think yes. you don't misunderstand us. We're not talking about a dictator. No. We're talking about your savior. A loving God. <laughs> and I think salvation matters more That's than, right. you, than your rights. Mm -hmm. uh, which again, remember, it boils down to the freedom of choice. That's right. Yeah. That's why Jesus is knocking. He's knocking at the heart of everybody. Whoever chooses to open, mm. then he, he enters. But when you choose, remember, when you choose Christ, you have, when you choose Christ, you have chosen life. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. You choose Christ, you have chosen life. That's mm -hmm. why there's always that element of directing. Mm -hmm. Please choose life today. Mm -hmm. Choose, the, do the right thing. And the whole Bible is actually bring, is written to bring us back to right doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But back to the verb open. Are you suggesting that many homes, many hearts are locked down? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you check the spiritual temperature, mm -hmm. uh, based on what people, do, people are doing, based on what uh, people believe, uh, you will discover many hearts are not open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you, you are not open. You, you talked, or, or rather, when I peeped through your presentation, yes. I saw something like spiritual lockdown. Yes. C can you elaborate a little it, bit on that? You see, when, you, when Christ op knocks mm -hmm. on your heart, and actually even at this time Christ is knocking, mm -hmm. and that's why we are speaking this, we are, Christ is, is speaking to us, and every time, and every sermon that is preached, that every prayer that is said is intended to get your heart open. Mm. Now, if you don't open your heart, you spiritually lock down yourself. Mm. In other words, there is nothing flowing between you and mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, in the, spiritual, in the, in the lockdowns today, the, 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 the lockdowns as a result of coronavirus, governments are locking down 
places, even government. Nobody is coming in, nobody is getting out. There is no freedom of movement. There is no freedom of interaction. There is no freedom. The same thing with us. If we don't open for Christ, there is no that chance of opening and working with Jesus. There is no that uh, uh, part of life where you can interact and, and, and know that there is even a God mm. who is supposed to be on your side. Mm. That's what we call now spiritual lockdown. But I would like to advise that every time, even in this kind of pandemic, let us open our hearts to mm. God. Let us open our, our, our hearts to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Even when governments have locked down, even when systems are locking down, economies are collapsing, let us keep our hearts open to our mm -hmm. Savior. And, and, and once we've, we have allowed him in, mm -hmm. we surrender oh, yes. the command. Yes. Is that what you're suggesting? We, we surrender the command. To, to, to him, right? Of course, and the mm -hmm. whole governance. Mm -hmm. the, you know, when Christ comes in, you remember what Paul says? It is no longer I who lives, mm. but Christ who lives mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. You know, when Christ takes over, then you begin to live for Christ. Mm. Even your deeds are direct towards his will. Your thoughts are managed by him. Mm. Even when there are scares, even amid these storms, that's why you, uh, you, when you, you read the book of Job, Job is in the storm of many things, but he did not leave his, mm -hmm. why? His heart constantly was open. I see. Yes. And I think that you have a verse that confirms Jesus remaining, right? Uh, yes, John, John 15, verse 5. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, yes. Let us, let us um, conclude with that one. You know, when you read that verse, it will let you know that Jesus says, if you remain in me and I remain in you, mm -hmm. or my words remain in you, for whatever you ask, you will definitely get. Mm -hmm. Jesus has constantly loved us to remain in him. Mm -hmm. This connection, this working together, this thing remaining in him is so much and Jesus loves it. Mm -hmm. we, we are not speaking all this because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. These words are supposed to be spoken before, mm -hmm. during, and after. Mm -hmm. it, it is very important to remain in the Lord because in the Lord you are safe. Because in the, in, the, in, the, in the Lord you have hope. Because in the Lord you have peace. In the Lord you have a provision. I mean, everything is in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And probably you would uh, you'd ask, and another person would, would ask, how do I remain Absolutely. in the Lord? Yes, it's, it's, it's too, you know, it, it, it needs to be packed down to understand how do I remain? Yes. Yeah. How do you really, how do you remain in the Lord? Now, when Christ comes and knocks and you open and he enters, what remains is for, for him to remain in you and you in him. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, you, you read the advice given by Paul, to Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Paul says, I mean, God says through Paul that now fix your mm. mind on things above, above, not on earthly things. Mm. Fix your mind on things above. Think about heaven. Mm. Work with God. Listen to God, read the word of God, depend on God, fix your mind on things above. Even when you are in trouble, even when the pandemic is ravaging people, please fix your mind on things above. Because by doing that, then you remain in 
God. Because they don't think I have yes. any improvement. Yes, on, yes, on, yes. On that verse, it is says it all. Yeah, we thank Fix God. Fix your mind on things on above. Things above. Mm -hmm. And what is your wish? My wish is that whoever is listening, whoever is watching this time and onwards, Fix your mind on things above. My friend, mm -hmm. we can't overemphasize that statement, that verse. Mm -hmm. I urge you to fix your mind on things above. Amen. And you will see the results. Amen. May God bless you. Until we meet again, let this hope continue. Mm -hmm. Let the Lord enter the Jesus, mm -hmm. and when He enters, surrender, hand over mm -hmm. to Him, mm -hmm. for He is your salvation. Amen. Be blessed. Amen.